I haven't given myself time. I never necessarily considered the creative option as a viable, let me try this out. Let me, you know, cause they're doing stuff with robotics and it looked kind of fun. And so I started going to meetups to learn as much as possible. So I was trying to fast track my education when I first started in IT. I get free pizza when I go to these things and I get to learn and I get beer. What? Like this is a win, 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 win. These nerds were, seemed like they had like power that was like black magic and and that's when i was like this is big boy shit now hello hello welcome to another episode of meet the makers this year we are digging in deep to try to find out um you know what made the makers we're joined today with michael tidwell who recently joined the bold fund community uh, working on satoshi settlers and he is uh, quite an extraordinary maker, in my opinion, because um, just of the origins and experience and stuff that he's had. And he'll be coming here to share his story with us um, so that you can learn, so we can learn about you know what it takes to be a maker. There's people are coming from all um, different pathways into the tech industry, the Bitcoin industry, whatever it is. And um, we're just trying to document some of those uh, stories and journeys, some of those pathways. Also to mention that we announced our first Maker Awards this year uh, for January. Tidwell and Aliage are the top makers uh, for January. So uh, they get some new cool merch as well as uh, some consulting for PeachF if they want it um, to you know, improve some of their design. And whatnot. Without further ado, let's get to Tidwell on stage. What's up, Tidwell? We're hey, going again. <laughs> happy to be here. Good, good, good to hang out and uh, and talk shop. So, let's do it. I want to know how it all began. What what did it take for you to become a maker? For you, you're working on this game now, but you're kind of going full circle uh, because from uh, our conversation earlier, this is kind of how you started off. You were playing these uh, video games. And you just got like drawn in. Uh, could you tell us a bit about what kind of games you were playing and what was the spark that kind of like said like, hey, I want to like start changing things in this game? Yeah, so I played a game called Empire Earth in 2001. It was a really fun game. You could play it online. This was a game that would allow you to easily mod the game. And there would be people that would host custom versions of the game on their private servers and you'd need to get their IP and join them and, you know, figure out how this worked. And anyways, it, it was, it was really interesting because I, it, it all seemed like magic, you know, cause I played the base game, uh, single player, didn't even try to go online. And then one day, you know, got, you know, whatever, decent enough internet to, to play. I tried the multiplayer option out and realized there's a whole big world out there of people who are playing this game and then I was like, what is this thing where people are like hosting? They're like hosting a game because back then it was a little hacky. They're like hosting a game and then they would have people join. And I was really excited because the, the game title sounded insane. But then they would post their IP and then dissolve the game and everyone would leave the server. I'm like, wait, where did everyone go? Like, what's going on? So I'd like learn like what the like I wanted to like play the game. They thought they had like eight people or whatever ready to play this game. Everyone was like committed. I was like, they're like, hey, I'm ready. And then everyone leaves. I'm like, what happened? Where did everyone go? Like, I, like, and, and I had to learn, you know, a lot about networking, port forwarding, et cetera. Nothing, nothing was quite static. You're, you're always given like an uh, IP from your ISP. So I guess every so often it would change. But, but this was, this was interesting because I, I didn't even know like Sierra at the time would like allow people to mod their games so like openly. So it was a very, it wasn't, there wasn't like a huge barrier to entry. I think they actually encouraged people to mod on their, on their engine and people would make custom versions of empire earth. It's still being modded today. The same game from 2001 is still being modded and they actually like upgraded the graphics. Like the modding community is still like doing stuff. It's kind of ridiculous. I, I then I was wondering after playing these really fun games, figuring it out, and then realizing like, holy crap! Like I didn't even know this stuff was possible. People were doing all sorts of insane, insane things, you know, outside of what a normal gameplay would be. I was like, how do, how do I do this? And I started getting into it. And I started trying to learn how this works. And I think my first sort of run at this was 
okay, let's see if I can, you know, have a location that just spawns infinite hordes of enemies. And I, I, I tried that, got it working finally. And then I was like, well, what if I want to spawn it on a timer every so often? So the the engine was graphical. It had a graphical editor, but you could go in and create custom conditions, effects, objects, uh, you know, specify where things were happening and what part of the, the map, customize the map completely. And it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, spent countless, countless hours. Man, I, I was like 10 years old, probably like, or whatever, and 12 years old just working on till four or 5 a.m. on these things. My parents would be like, what the hell are you doing? And I remember like just, just trying to make these, like these games that, that I think that I thought would be fun. And I finally made a, a modded game that I thought like, Hey, I'm, I'm getting good enough at, you know, making games now. Uh, like let's, let's, uh, let, let me, let me try to see if anyone else wants to play this game. I got people, uh, test it out and play it. And then I knew I really hit gold when I saw other people starting to host the game on their private servers and, 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 and try to, you, you'd use like the Sierra lobby as like your place to like advertise your game. So people would like go in, host a fake game, and then they would post their IP and be like, no, actually join my server. So people were doing that. You could see people hosting, uh, uh, you know, looking for people to play my game. And I'm like, oh crap, like, someone else wants to play it. That's amazing. Like this is, this is, this is awesome. So that's, that's when I was really like, man, this is, this is really fulfillful. You, you spend countless hours making something and then other people want to play it and have fun with their friends. That was, that was really, uh, that was a great experience. And, you know, I, I kept, I kept trying to iterate and take it different levels, but you know, um, that that's sort of where it started. I I guess you know, and the high specifically was like right. seeing see, other people, see other people thing. appreciate what you've done and, the proof is with people wanting to play it, right? Uh, not just giving feedback, but actively lobbying for their friends to play it with them is it's, it's telling to, to see, you know, how well you're doing based on do other people want to play this game? Um, you know, I made probably like three or four games that were like p- polished enough to like play. And, um, you know, it, the first one was like a very, very thin map, it was like a very long, thin map where it was like a tug of war and you'd have to like, you know, throw nukes at each other and all kinds of stuff. And that one got some attention. Um, another one was like tribute the Titan where you had to decide on whether or not you wanted to build up resources to attack your enemy or give it to like this really oversized, like I made like the graphic of this guy, like 800% bigger than normal. And he was like unstoppable. And if you'd either have to send him gold or build up forces, so you had to either decide, you know, what you wanted to do. And if you didn't tribute the Titan, he would come and like destroy enough of your stuff to like make it where it's like, oh, there's like this trade off where it's like I need to satisfy this big like crazy entity in the middle, or is he maybe is someone else like more in debt than me, and I don't have to worry about it. But none of that was public, so you didn't know if the other team was more in debt or you were more in debt. But you, whoever, like you know, you didn't want to be the 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 least you know you don't want to you didn't want to send the least it was kind of like a gambler's thing but then if he comes you can still try to defend but he's like super powerful so it's it was that was that was kind of like a cool idea um but that one i bit off a lot of scope that one actually never got polished but yeah. anyways a lot, a lot of ideas maybe maybe now i can finally implement more of these ideas now so that's that's the cool part yeah yeah with satoshi settlers um uh, uh we'll get to that one i want to share something um so uh you met uh, talking about like discovering like the game servers and stuff i don't yeah this, this was early 2000s right uh when you were making this yeah so uh around this time we were playing this game called mu online uh mu online um i don't know it's like this asian like 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 it's only popular in like korea thailand and like some other place somehow we ended up uh playing this game i always used to like playing with like the magicians and and stuff but it threw modding that game um and it was an mmorpg through that one i got into the like online networking part, the internet part. I used to make them locally using this tool called Game Maker. Oh, Game Maker has been around forever. <laughs> right, right. And from what I remember, I, like, like I haven't looked back at it um, for a while, but there was this one guy who made this like little, you know, game making software IDE thing. 
um, no code really at the time. You, you didn't really have to code. And um, I think it's like, it, it's gotten kind of big now, hasn't it? Dude, Game Maker's huge. Yeah, Game Maker, um, yeah. There's a guy uh, that's really popular at the moment on YouTube and Twitch called Pirate Software, and he uses Game Maker for his latest game. So it's it's not going away anywhere quick. So damn, that's amazing. That is like such ancient. And you so like I like so so I'm like okay, I need to draw my own sprites because I don't want to use other people's. Like like I was that kind of guy. Um, and then I was doing like mods for um, GTA. Uh, Vice City and Liberty City. Um, I took uh, uh, Tommy Vassetti's face and I made a skin of my little brother <laughs> to be on Tommy Vassetti. <laughs> it, was, it looked horrible, but you know, this is kind of like playing with the design and stuff. And I think after that, we were modding um, Moo Online and then we were figuring out how to, like, you know, like it was great because in the MMO, uh, you have like limited resources. But in our version, you could have unlimited everything. So all the um, all the armor and stuff that you couldn't earn in the normal game, uh, we could just like give it to ourselves and deal. Okay, so if it was your server, you could make your own rules, kind of idea, like Minecraft. Exactly, but um, but there was these forums that you would advertise it on, right? Uh, yeah, you would advertise these things on forums, and actually, I made fr- so much friends from well, not like I made a couple friends uh, from that game. Um, early on and I actually met one of them like maybe seven years ago in London he was originally from Brazil we'd be on Skype calls talking um we're like kids like like teenagers you know um and his mom would be like oh I say hi to John's and he's practicing his English and it's crazy like you know what like Almost uh, 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 more than a decade after we, we had the meeting. <laughs> That's awesome. One of the things that you also mentioned to me was that you didn't realize that you were coding at the time. Right. I didn't even know what coding was. I was just I was just making a game and I didn't know if this was coding or not. Uh, I, I, I always assumed that programming was, you know, kind of unattainable. So I, I, I considered whatever I was doing probably pretty far away. But, you know, now I kind of especially with video game development, coding is more or less on a spectrum and, and such as like life and everything. I mean, I guess, you know, looking back now, I was doing a type of programming and, uh, you know, specifying objects, conditions, effects and stuff, but I was doing it through the interface of the Sierra engine, like default, you know, editor. Even like thinking about it now, like, I guess I was programming, but it's kind of kind of crazy. I, I definitely didn't know it was programming. I'll put it that way. And I definitely didn't write good code, but... <laughs> I was I was making things happen. Making things happen. That's uh that's important. Just like trying to realize an idea, right? Just trying to realize an idea. And really like I think the more you grind on something and then you figure it out, the more you've really like solidified that concept. So if or at least for me that's how it works. So if I do spend an hour or two or whatever it might be where it probably should only take a few minutes. Like that concept is not really, really solidified. And I might be, I feel like I'm able to use that as a building block for other things. And I, I don't necessarily think, um, as long as you have time on your hands, right? If you have, you know, <laughs> which, which, uh, I feel like, which I feel like, uh, between the ages of like, you know, whatever, when people are asleep between the, the times of like 10 PM and 4 AM, it's like you have free time to do what you want. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 something where you can definitely get lost. Uh, you can definitely lose track of time when when you really get into it. You know. You were saying that um, uh, 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 you're now able to kind of like explore some of your um, uh, your creative side and stuff like that. Um, is that something that kind of like you always had like uh, 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 this this draw to to making things and 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 changing things around you? I think it's really been, I just haven't had, I haven't given myself time, right? I've been either in school or built, trying to build out my career. I never necessarily considered the creative option as a viable, uh, you know, most effective career choice. So I've always sort of, you know, made it a hobby and hasn't, haven't necessarily prioritized it, but because of my situation right now where, uh, I've, I've sort of built out some of the core building blocks that I need. I'm able to sort of venture off into this a little bit more easily. Um, Like for instance, 
you know, ZBD's API, right? I really want to, I really need that to work really well before I start making a game using ZBD's API to enable easy lightning payments and et cetera. And, and that's like an example where it's like, I help build out the infrastructure and the robustness of that API and our services. So now I can actually like, uh, you know, bear the fruits of our labor and actually build something on top of what we built. And, and that's just like an example. I, you know, obviously right now I'm trying to build a Bitcoin, uh, video game and it's, it's something where, you know, running all the Bitcoin infrastructure and maintaining, uh, you know, maybe like a Nostra relay or a, uh, lightning node or a Bitcoin node, uh, that's going to be used and interfaced with, uh, outside of just personal usage is right. It's, it's, it's a lot of overhead and it's nice to, it's nice to be able to build that out in a more, more or less professional sense and then be able to use that for personal hobby projects afterwards. So, um, so I, I feel like I'm in a really cool spot where um, we, we've done enough, I've done enough work now to where my, uh, I can be effective, more effective with my time right now. So I don't, I don't know what, if that kind of answers your question a little bit, but yeah. no, no, no. I do find it kind of funny though, because it's like, you know, <laughs> um, we go through these, um, like, I feel like some people kind of, like, lose that passion and, like, that drive and that creativity. Like, when you're, like, super young, it's like, oh, I'm just doing all this wild stuff. And they're like, no, you can't. Yes, I can. I'm going to do it. And then, you know, we go through the system of, like, you know, okay, career, professional, chasing the money, yeah. et, cetera, et cetera, whatever it is. And then, like, the ultimate uh, the ultimate thing is to be able to pursue your passion to begin with, right? Ultimately, at the end of the day, we're all doing this so we can make video games. And it's like, it's like, why do we do any of this? It's, we want to make really fun video games. And it's like, I, I like, you know, you have like that to-do list and some people, it might like drop out your to-do list. Like my to-do list is still like make dank video games that people want to play that are fun, that are like really fulfillful. And, um, it's like now learning Bitcoin and, and lightning and stuff. It's like, I want to add Nostra. Like I want to add all the cool stuff I'm learning, like into this, uh, like to-do list. Like, so I'm definitely following up. Uh, and it's, it's funny, like it's always been in the back of my mind that I want to do this. It's just now I'm, I guess I'm sort of leaning more into it. Right. We didn't talk about your professional career because it has been quite extensive in terms of like the skill sets that you've been able to, uh, acquire, um, uh, 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 all throughout the years. So like you got the spark, you finally realize, okay, maybe I'm programming. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to go to university for this. Um, so at first I thought, okay, I wasn't going to go to college. Um, granted, I still didn't really know what I was doing on the Sierra engine. I still didn't really understand like if I, if that was programming or if that was even like something that was, I, I thought maybe that was just like really something specific for Sierra engine. It, it didn't necessarily translate. I was so naive, right? Uh, I like to, to what I was even doing at the time. I just know, like I was having fun doing it. Right. And it, it wasn't until my junior year of high school, I decided to, you know, I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I was doing like mechanical draft drafting electives. And I was thinking about doing architecture and it was like the next kind of logical step is going from like mechanical drafting and then you can take architecture but then I decided, let me try something else. So I went to the IT department, like elective room was right next to the mechanical drafting room and the workshop room with like wood, woodworking and all that. And, and right next to it was the computer lab, you know, stuff. And I was like, you know, I was talking to someone, they made something sound interesting. I was like, let me try this out. Let me, you know, cause they're doing stuff with robotics and it looked kind of fun. And, and, you know, there's robotic, you know, competitions and these nerds were seemed like they had like power that was like black magic. And, uh, I was just like, let me, let me, let me see that. So I took a web class. I took like a web design class or like a HTML class or something. And just the simple, making a website with JavaScript and, and at the time flash wasn't taboo. Um, you know, just doing stuff with flash and JavaScript and HTML and CSS, that was enough to say, Holy shit. Like this is the the fire that I felt like this is, this is what I want to do. I want to build stuff. I want to build stuff that people can consume digitally. Cause this is so clear for me that this is like, 
like like i feel like a caveman if you if you like take someone from like the past and you show them like some really cool like physical object versus if you show them like a a screen with like some shit on it they're gonna be like whoa that looks like magic i understand this kind of and i feel like the like just like the natural progression of like the cooler thing is like gonna be like the it digital kind of stuff um granted you know this is there's a lot of caveats with what i just said but that you know i i really was like now i know i want to go to school for it or something or computers or something so that's really where i was like okay i know what i'm going to do before i was like i'm not going to go to college i don't know what this i don't even know what i'm going to do you know maybe s- sell shoes at pay less i don't know yeah you know um uh for me it was uh seeing um like like my introduction to uh programming i guess was um uh, there was a guy, um, one of our neighbors, uh, uh, he was just visiting St. Lucia for like some months um, on like vacation, I guess, uh, long sabbatical. And uh, uh, we became friends. He was, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, we became friends. And I asked him like, hey, so what did you do? Um, you know, like uh, back home in Scotland and stuff. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, I was a Java programmer. Didn't know. No idea what that is. I'm like a programmer. Oh, what does a programmer do? How does that work? He's like, well, you know, sometimes I'd make websites and make this and, and explaining it to me. And then he um, he uh, created a index.html file. Uh, sorry, he created a, a a new document on his desktop. He changed the name to index.html, and I saw the icon change from a text to like an index explorer. I'm like, whoa. How did you do that? <laughs> you changed the icon, man. So I thought if I just put .exe on the end, now I'm making <laughs> the icon does change, but it can't run, right? But then, yeah, but then he um, he put like like he, he wrote some text, "Hello world," saved it, refreshed the page, and I'm like, whoa, it's in the browser now. That, that's crazy. It was a text document. You open it in Notepad. You change your icon. Now it's in the. And then he put an H1 in there and my mind was. Yeah. For, for me, it was uh, before divs uh, were popular. Divs were just getting popular when I was kind of looking at HTML. It was still super new. No one really used them. I was using the table. And that's when I was like, I know how websites work now. Like I know how you lay out websites. And I was like, this is sick. So that was that was my like Eureka, like H1 moment was like learning about the table element and I was just like, whoa, this is this is this is big boy shit now. And- exactly. Yeah, yeah, because prior to that, I was just like editing the graphics of these games. And by the way, I definitely used to play um uh, do you remember um do you know this game um Mount Olympus or uh, something of Olympus? I thought you were going to say Oregon Trail. No, I don't I don't know Mount Olympus. No, there was Pharaoh, there was Pharaoh, Cleopatra and Olympus. Uh, all using the Sierra engine. I I actually did play a bunch of like Egyptian RTS, uh, like civilization builder games. If if you're talking about, uh, they're they're all really good. And uh, I remember like the Nile would flood. You'd have to plant crops and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. The, I re- I remember now. This memory is coming back. I remember uh, Counter Strike. Uh, people found out how to put it on the internet's uh, like network uh, file system or whatever it would be like, like the the network uh, disk or the network you know file storage. And then every computer was essentially a client for Counter Strike. And I remember, <laughs> I remember like, um, yeah, I don't know. I just thought, yeah. Anyways kind of sidebar i'm just it's just all these great memories are coming back to me right now so still chasing still chasing that high there you know like pe- interacting with people um getting them to you know right so that's kind of interesting because that's what got you excited when you made that like first game as well right right it's it's uh having people enjoy what you've done i mean i know that sounds so simple i mean people say like okay i really enjoy when people um like my cooking I really enjoy when people like this. It's whatever that, like, I, I feel like it's very human nature to like, 
have that be one of your like top things is have people appreciate the things that you've done, the things that you've built. No one wants to spend so much time building or doing something that no one appreciates. Um, I would say most people are probably like that. And, and that's why, you know, so many, uh, public people that give like public help advice or whatever are always saying like, Hey, prototype, prototype your shit, like proof of concept it, make sure, you know, you, 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 you have people that can enjoy it or whatever. Um, because everyone at the end of the day is, uh, might be telling themselves like, Oh, I don't care if people like it. I'm doing this for myself. Yeah. But uh, it's really nice when you can do it for yourself and other people like it. You know, it's, it's nice when you can get both of those and it's hard to know unless you really know, unless you really know, which is sort of like this universal thing. Like you just know, you don't know. And I would say very few people actually know like they, I would say it's a really awesome gift to go heads down and not need to prototype stuff and know if people are going to need this thing or whatever. Like that's a great gift and that's a great quality. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying it's rare and you probably don't have it. You probably need to like talk to your friends, talk to people around you and, you know, make sure like what you're doing like is kind of meshes with what someone would actually want. Granted, I would say there's, a lot of caveats with what I'm saying. If you really need the thing that you're building, then yeah, screw it. Like you need it. That That's a little bit different. But for the creative types that are doing something for entertainment value, right? It's like, are you really just trying to entertain yourself? Probably not. You want you want other people to also be entertained by what you're doing, right? A, a, a comic or a comedian doesn't go on stage and try to entertain himself, right? He tries to entertain himself and the audience. He tries to like, you, you know what I mean? And I, to, to some degree where... We're, we're trying to do this, I, I think, is, is have, make everyone have a good time, increase the uh, the charisma and the influence and the emotions and everything positive of the world like around us. Like you, everyone just wants to increase. Yeah, you want to you just want to pump the vibes of, of the world and the way that you can. I, mean, I know a lot of people might, you know, talk cynically or say like, you know, like, oh, you know, people are stupid or whatever. Like, yeah, like. Uh, but but really, like I, I think I think there's uh, for a lot of people, we all want the vibes of the world to like go up. We we don't want we don't want to live in a shitty world where everyone hates each other, and we want to have a good time. So this is this is right. This is our way of sort of right uh, attacking that that sort of idea, and or you know facilitating it. I love that so much. Pump the vibes up, just positive vibes. I love it. And on that topic of like. Uh, I know you need to rush soon on the topic of, um, uh, uh, you know, sharing things with the world. You have been sharing um, your project uh, quite extensively on Bold Fun. Really appreciate that. We try to promote building in public exactly for that reason. You know, um, there's a lot of people who are not comfortable with sharing something. They don't feel confident and stuff as yet. I think it does, you know, getting that outside, you know, perspective, it, People say outside validation, don't look for validation and stuff like that. But like if you're building something specifically or if you're like trying to create something, um, yeah, you kind of, as you mentioned, you just want to like, hey, especially as a game, hey, like check this out. Do you think it's cool? I think that's a that's an interesting point because you also want it to be self-validating as well. Because if you're doing something just for someone else, that can also be probably just as bad, right? Or Or that can actually be worse because now you feel like you're, indebted and burdened by this project that everyone likes that you hate that 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 could be even right that 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 could be uh like uh even worse fuck, I fucked up my hair but um the, uh i'm just thinking like uh yeah that, that 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 could be a terrible situation i think that having having both is is really important having something that you can be like yeah i'm doing it for myself and for other people that's I think really like that's, that's the sweet spot, right? One of the reasons why people don't share things um, as well is because um, it's like, it's unpolished. So like there's a fear of being judged. I hope, you know, and it's like, Hey, well, it's not ready yet. Especially with designers. This happens quite often. They typically do not show their off their work until it's absolutely finished. And um, for your game, uh, I recently did like a five minute kind of like a video. Let's see if I can make a logo for this. Because Dahlia, she's just like completely excited about the game. Um, I'm very interested to, to see some of the mechanics and stuff that you're making with this because it's kind of like I real like through through that game you were posting about and playing with it. 
I realized that you're actually able to create a multiplayer game pretty easily. Well, I'm not saying it's easy, but like not like before, you know, before this was like crazy to do. And so maybe you could talk uh, just before we go like a couple of minutes about Satoshi Settlers. And- sure. So Satoshi Settlers right now is definitely a fun like POC, like let's, let's, let's use Bitcoin, WebLN, Noster, Lightning, et cetera. Uh, let's use cool technologies to make a really fun progressive world game. So it's a progressive world map that evolves as users interact with it. That's that's the current flow uh, and idea um, going into the short term, near term kind of idea. So uh, the every tile in the game of Satoshi Settlers is a Bitcoin block, which means every time a block is mined, the map gets bigger. The Genesis block starts at the middle of the map and it spirals outward. And it's an ever-growing spir- spiraling outward map, right? And the hash of the block determines what the block is. So eventually, which is not current, I want to make sure there's a lot of features I'm going to implement that aren't currently available. But the you can keep track of what resources you own. Uh, you can build stuff and do certain interactions in the game based on the resources. And the resources are based off the hash of the block, right? So if you're looking for certain resources, maybe you have to like, you know, look around for the blocks or you have to, you know, it, it kind of forces you to also kind of figure out, you know, what, what you're looking for and then you can go in the game or maybe you just buy blocks and then see what resources it, it yields you. Uh, and and there's, there's, there's a lot of ideas here. I don't necessarily want to talk too much until... Their actual ideas are cheap. I want to actually implement them and then be able to talk about them. And and as I'm working on them, like talk about them. But there's tons of features I want to implement. Uh, right now, you currently do need a lightning address to play. And the lightning address is there because if someone takes your land, if someone takes your block, they have to pay double what you paid, but then you get the you get the refund uh, a little bit more than what you paid in, right? So you you get compensated a little bit for you know your the theft, and so so if you get your stuff stolen, at least I can say, well, hey, you get you got more sats than what you put in, so go buy another block, you know, somewhere else. There's a lot of blocks out there that are unclaimed, and yeah, so that's that's kind of it right now. It's using WebAssembly. It's using super, you know, niche uh, or I'll say new kind of technologies and web first. So I don't have to worry about, you know, getting deplatformed with, you know, moving money around and stuff, uh, you know, where Apple and Google might get upset if I'm sending Bitcoin to people or receiving Bitcoin, vice versa kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so it's it's supposed to run in the web browser. Uh, there's a live version of it, satoshisettlers.com. It's super alpha, uh, so I have disclaimers on there. And it, but still, it's you know, I'm looking for people to play test, report bugs. Um, I would also say if you, you know, if uh, if you have no sats and you want to play, like maybe hit me up. Like you know, it's it's pretty cheap to to go in there and and have some fun, or you know. I say fun. It's it's hard to say that the game's fun at the moment, but that the the, the goal is to, to 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 get it there eventually. Positive vibes only, upping the level of good vibes in the world. Let's go, <laughs> and you're creating a whole new world as well. But but something interesting that you might not know about. I'm doing this tomorrow. I do the. I'm starting to do these on Fridays. I'm actually live streaming myself coding Satoshi Settlers on Twitch now, and I and doing this alone and like just kind of hanging out on Twitch. I'm almost affiliate, which is really cool because then I'll be able to do like channel points and stuff on Twitch. But again, just going back to like building in public, like I'm going to be coding in public. And uh, really, I think it was uh, a chow that, that let me know like this was a thing. Cause like he streams his like PR reviews on Twitch. And then I didn't realize there was like a whole software development channel or section on twitch and then i learned about zap.stream and i'm like okay oh dude there's so many things and and i think like there's a little bit of a concern from like outsiders that aren't builders or makers and even maybe people inside where it's like you don't want to like become a maker on like some niche technology like nostr or bitcoin and then like yell out into the void and then hear your echo you want to make sure like other people are doing this stuff too so it's like let's let's do this like let's jump in together i think bolt up fun is facilitating that. I, that's why I, I thought it was awesome. Reached out uh, and joined up. Um, let's make this not a void. Let's make it a very like 
hyper interactive like like community where we want to keep building we want to keep you know fostering this these technologies because it won't build itself right and and I, I love the the idea of building in public. I'm doing it with Twitch, Bolt.fun, my Discord, and a little bit of Twitter and Noster, and um, and 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 again, you know, building in public and making in public. Back to TabConf, we we do everything on GitHub submissions. We we try to make it a builder building builders conference, and my I think I think we're totally like in line with like, you know it. I, I, I care way more about way more about people building on Bitcoin, making it more valuable that way than an ETF that pumps the the numbers or something. Like I want it to be a ultimate utility, an ultimate, you know, uh I, I would say Bitcoin and related technologies, obviously, like Nostr. Like I want all these things to be built out and be really good, have a lot of utility. And I want that to what that is the thing that uh, is is the is the driving factor on appreciating any sort of like underlying asset value, right? I don't want it to be like I want it. I want the utility to support uh, the price point. I don't want. I, I would hate for the price point to go to a million dollars and it still is as useful as it is now. It's no more, or no less useful. And it's like, okay, that's you know, if that means it can also drop by eighty percent tomorrow, you know, and it's just like uh, I want it to be where, where it's like. It, this thing is damn useful and we need to build it. Right. It's not going to, it's not, it's not going to happen on its own. So it, a lot of people are like, Oh, it's inevitable. It's this or this. It, I'm like, well, it is inevitable. If we do it, we have to do it though. Right. And you, you should want to be part of that. Right. If you're in this early, like do what you can uh, because there's so many opportunities. Right. And you don't have to work in Bitcoin full time. You can do your job and then make this the hobby and then transition or whatever. But uh, this thing that I see about inevitability and, you know, and uh, just just you know, random takes about like Bitcoin is perfect the way it is. It can ossify without any, any further changes. I'm just like, OK, like I'll listen to you. Maybe you got some points here, but like until you actually dive in, it's hard to make these sort of overarching uh, sort of arguments, you know. No, I love it. I, no, I absolutely love it. I definitely agree with you 100%. I know you do have to go though, but um, thank you so much, Michael. Um, really, really uh, appreciate it. Satoshi Settlers, I'll be paying attention to it. We're going to put um, your uh, uh, Twitch link in our next newsletter and stuff as well and um, promote it because I love what you're doing. And I think that Satoshi Settlers, you know, um, uh, 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 coming all full circle again, which is a theme that we've been having on these episodes, um, going full circle again when you were 10 years old, working on your little uh, games or plotting land and modding them and stuff like that. I think this one is going to be the one. I think you're going to get uh, 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 reap the rewards for it. It's very interesting dynamics that you have there with the Bitcoin aspects and Lightning address. So I'm very excited to see how it uh, develops. Cool. Well, Thanks. Thanks for your time, John. It was nice hanging out. Take care. Thank you so much, everybody. We're ending now.